I would say it's more about your long-term thinking personally, but it also depends on the matchup. So Yeah, like each mirror match is just going to be different from the next. It yeah. really just depends. There's somewhere it's like, oh, it might actually just come down to some speed ties. Oh, yes, yeah, speed ties are the worst. <laughs> others might just come down to play. But we're going to see the Fluttermane and the Arcanine for Joso. Not going to be the same for Pokemon going to be brought on both players, but Gashadon Iron Hands is an interesting one from James Evans. It totally is. Yeah, Gashadon we didn't really see in the last set, and there's not actually a water move on Joe's team. So this Gastron is purely here for not its ability. That's interesting here. You know, I had Speed Booster, Energy Ball, Flutter main, but Joe doesn't have Energy Ball on his. He's got Taunt and Icy Wind. So I feel like every time I see Arcanine led, it's just immediately got a dip. You know what I mean? Like in, in both of James' sets, or in the two games that James led uh, uh, Arcanine earlier, it just had to switch out immediately. It, I think it's an interesting Pokemon. Yeah, so Gastronaut's not threatened here by both of these Pokemon since it's not like an invested Flutter main right here. So can go for an Earth Power, could go for a Yawn immediately and force Joe to like play the Switching Wars. So going to be in a pretty decent spot. The Iron Hand's a little bit in a more awkward one where it's threatened by Moonblast. It's also a Terra Fairy option, but we'll see what's coming out here. But no switches oh, at all, and a Terra going to be committed, committed already. Here. Yeah, that's a big deal. It's probably Terra Fairy on the on the Arcanine. This is actually Choice Band Terra Blast. Arcanine, um, which is a really good offensive uh, offensive attack here. Um, from Joe's side, he, he doesn't really have, or for, sorry, from James' side, he doesn't really have that much that wants to take um, a Terra Blast. The only the only real option here is the, oh my god, that's a lot. Uh, the only real Pokemon here that, that kind of wants to take a Terra Blast is the, the Hisuian Arcanine. Um, as we do see a double up here, I think this is a good play. Actually, doesn't, that did a ton of damage. I'm not, I'm not crazy, right? That did a ton of damage, yeah. Yeah, wow. that, that fake out into Earth Power doing old for half to that Hisuian Arcanine. Joe's already committed to Terra, but is it really? You do get to conserve the Arcanine. You haven't been locked into a move because of the fake out, but right now, I don't know. I feel like James is just sitting right here and like it's not super threatened. Sure, the Iron Hands is threatened, but you do have say switches. Uh, you do have the Cresselia, which we did see, and like the Cresselia can really just easily switch in right here. The Flutter Main doesn't have Shadow Ball. How either. much? How much will it do though? How much will like a like a, a Terra Fairy Play Rough or a Terra Blast do here? Is, is my question because I feel like it could it could probably do a decent a decent amount of damage. Yeah, maybe I'd probably say maybe 30, 40 percent, maybe maximum. Okay. We'll, we'll see how the case is here, but looks like James is going to go for the switch to Cresselia and yawn that Flutter Main. You do want to slow down that Flutter Main, but let's see if there's a Taunt maybe involved here. Absolutely, and, and yep. a great play from uh, Joe here going for the Taunt. Going to prevent the Gastronaut from going for a yawn, but also uh, that can be used against Cresselia to stop both Lunar Blessing and Trick Room. So I, I really like this play here. It's terrible. Let's see what this, this does. I think we could do a decent chunk. That's a decent chunk. Yeah, not a bad chunk for a Choice Bandit Terra Blast. Maybe a little bit underwhelming, but Cress is just that tanky. Right here, it's kind of tough to say if a Moon Blast plus Terra Blast would actually KO the Cresselia since it's Speed Booster Flutter Main. So that could be a little bit tricky, but you can go for the Taunt if you really want to prevent it. Looks like we're actually going to see a Terra committed from the Cresselia to be able to resist both Moon Blast and Terra Blast potentially. And yeah, it looks like James is just locking in, trying to maybe just go for some damage right here with a Psychic and Earth Power Double. Looks like he's committing to the Flutter Main because that Flutter Main is just stopping him from really being able to do anything. Like the Yawn, the Gastrodon normally would like to provide here. Not able to happen. You are probably going to get taunted, so you're not going to be able to go for a Lunar Blessing or Trick Room Eater. Absolutely. Actually, we see Flutterman is actually good in all four of these Pokemon. It can Moonblast Iron Hands for like 40%. It can outspeed an Icy Wind, the Scarf Landorus. It can taunt the Gastrodon, and it can taunt the Cresselia. So I think I'd like to see Joe actually go for a double up here into the Gastrodon here because it's been taunted. It is. He's going to make the safer play, though, and go for a taunt into the Cresselia here. I'm a little surprised that James is not targeting down this Arcanine. I feel like Terra Blast is actually putting on a lot of pressure here. Um... But yeah, James content to just kind of ignore the, the Arcanine here for a little bit longer and go after the, the Flutterman instead. That does not do very much damage. Yep, the Psychic going to come out into the Flutterman. Should do a decent amount of chunk, maybe a little bit 20, 25. Our power going to follow up. It looks like another duo round will be able to kill the Flutterman, but... Right now, it's kind of hard to say. Uh, Joe has some really heavily weakened Pokemon. James also has like a half HP Cresselian Iron Hands, but we'll see what can come out of this turn. Yeah, I think that now that the Terra has been committed, it's a lot safer for um, for Joe to just go after the the Gastrodon slot here because I mean you, you're always you're always Terra blasting that slot right anyway, and so Moonblast will most likely put in a range of another um, attack here. I do think that like I'm a little surprised Landers didn't come in sooner. Honestly, I mean I guess you don't really want to take that much chip, but I do feel like getting the Intimidate down Terra Blast isn't a super strong move if it's not hitting for super effective. So I do think that getting an Intimidate down earlier would would have been um, in Joe's uh, and James's favor here is we do finally have James reveal his last Pokemon here. 
if either of these moves crit, Gastronon can go down with, but without a crit, I, I really wouldn't expect Gastronon. Assuming this is a double up here is... Ah, well, ah, well, that actually did a lot. This Fluttermane seems to be pretty offensive now that I look at it. What do you think? There, there's no way this KO's, right? Uh, not with that Intimidate, I don't think so. Yep. Oh, yep, not very much at all. That's Choice Ben, ladies and gentlemen. Um, what is the Gastronon name again? Oh my goodness, Fluttermane barely hangs on. Yeah, that's going to be pretty big because this Fluttermane actually does have Icy Wind, so it actually can do a significant amount to the landers. And depending on the, how the Arcanine and the, and the landers are trained, you could potentially Icy Wind, and if the Arcanine's faster, you could go for a Terra Blast into the landers. So let's see if that's going to be the case. But I think James just knowing how to play it safe, uh, going to go for a... Oh, no, he's actually going to go for the U-turn and try to KO the Fluttermane and... Ars okay. He's thinking about it here. Yeah. This, this is tough, right? Because, it, like, I mean, they know who's faster between the Arcanine and the... The, the landers after an icy win, but we certainly don't. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's 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 the big question here, right? Because if you if like the thing is that landers can also just switch back into Griselia, take the icy wind and the excuse me Terra blast and and, and be fine because of the Terra fire. But um, of course the Gastronon can also go down. So basically, Joe's going to get KO on a lot of Pokemon here, and actually he's going to step off the gas here a little bit, switch out the Arcanine, go into Iron Is. I actually didn't even catch what what uh, they end up locking into here, but. Gashadon switching here. This is the, let's see here. I think it was Cresselia. Cresselia, yeah. okay. And I Not think bad. it was a U turn into the Flutter main, let's so. See. Let's see. I see Wendy. You're going to do a fair bit of damage. Uh, looks like Joe is content to just give up on the Flutter main here. Um, it's done a lot of work. I mean, like, like getting, like. James is James is not out of this by any means, especially with Lunar Blessing. But the Flutterman was with Tom was was doing a ton of work here, so I think it's really good that James is finally able to remove it. Yeah, I'm kind of curious on what Joe will have as his last Pokemon because it could potentially be, for instance, if he did decide to bring the darker Shifu, you have a Fake Out and you have a Wicked Blow. Also, the fact that if these Iron Hands are both the same speed investment, the fact that Fake Out being a speed tie actually like changes this game significantly if that's the case mm -hmm. which would be really bad here um but we're actually just going to see arcanine come in again which does I make like sense this. Yeah. yeah i mean Troy's ben rock slide's really strong you've already got some damage on the landerus which is really nice um and although i guess like yeah it's, it's the speed the speed order here is really really relevant right i think this play makes sense personally i think out in spite i mean it might not be what james commits to but i think it makes a lot of sense because like here Mm, it, like the only way that this can play backfires is if you if you eat the fake out with the iron hands, which is just so risky given that it's most likely a speed tie. Yeah, I'm actually curious. There is the intimidate. Will the extreme speed? Will fake out in the extreme speed KO after yeah. the intimidate? We'll see here. Fake okay. out going to come out from James's iron hands and yep, yep. trading fake outs. 62 L. I think that. I, I think. I think it could live. I, oh, you think it could live? Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Has it taken a terror? No, it took an Icy Wind. It took an Icy Wind earlier, and it does have, like, a decent amount of bulk, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. it has, like, some HP investments, so... Like, we've seen this Arcanine just not really do that much damage across, so it's going to be, like, really hard to say. Granted, you could, like, switch, but the thing is, if you switch, I think everything is going to be another extreme speed range anyway, Yeah. so... I feel like if, if Joe can just take a single KO here, I feel like Arcanine can run over this game. Like, he's done so much damage to James's team over the course of this battle, but he's not closed it out yet. Yeah, and the important thing is you have to close it out because even if you got a lot of damage, it doesn't matter if they get the knockouts before you do. So let's see. Is I think it's a double. Oh into, my ooh. goodness! It's a switch here. Yeah, it looks like Ar this like Arcanine is going to go down. And it is the Urshifu here as the last. So this could just be a this could just be a, a Terra Blast. It is extreme speed here. Not going to pick up the KO on the lander. Is that actually not even that close? Well, stop me to have KO because that means the attack will get oh, redirected into our Shifu. That the focus means, sash is gone. Yeah, the focus sash is gone. Granted, it wasn't the worst case because it could have technically been Drain Punch here. I think it was a Heavy Slam that was locked in instead. And yeah, that's going to do significantly less damage to our Shifu. So if you're Joe, you're probably more happy about that if you're help happy about anything. But I guess it's not a bad position regardless. Like everything is other than the Iron Hands is in range of Wicked Blow. So you can go for like Fake Out. Uh, is this Cresselia with the Terra Fire? Because it might, it might survive, actually, because this is Sash Urshifu. Yeah, it could potentially. I'm kind of curious if the Iron Hands lives a close combat at this range, because most Dark Urshifus we've seen run adamant nature, so both of them are actually, like, pretty pinned. If the close combat does KO Iron Hands, a fake out on a Landris and just a simple close combat would get a double knockout here, potentially, yeah. and that would be pretty bad. Also, Landris going to be pretty hard to use because it's just always dropped to my Sucker Punch, but maybe you can use that to your advantage here. Yeah, I think if I'm Joe here, I really want damage on the Iron Hands because you can use Urshifu to beat everything else later. Like, as you said, you can KO Landers at any time with Sucker Punch. 
it is going to be a switch. I think this is smart from James. You really don't want to give up your um, your Iron Hands too soon as Gashinon does switch in here. Yeah, was it a double switch so you could save for the Intimidate so the Dark... Oh, the Retect, actually. I don't remember exactly what uh, James did here. Oh, it is just Fake Out. Protect Fake Out. Intri That's an interesting play. Um, that actually might cost him the game here, I think, because Iron Hands can come back in here and Fake Out Yawn could be really, really problematic, I think. Um, so yeah, I think actually James, that turn might be the difference maker here. I think I think the, the, the odds of James winning just swung dramatically in, in their favor. I don't know. This could still be tough, though, because does Gashadon go down to Drain Punch at this range? Oh, because yeah. Yeah, Iron true. Hands could just outspeed the, and Drain Punch the Gashadon here. I think a lot of it might just come down to... It could come down to a speed type, potentially, where it might be like a double up the Iron Hand situation. Mm -hmm. You could go for the close combat Iron Hands. You could Drain Punch the Gashadon if you read the Fake Out and Yawn play. This is actually a really tricky position. Yeah, <laughs> and actually yeah, the, the the Heavy Slam earlier could end up playing a role here, breaking the Sash, but interesting that they're not going for, well, I guess we should, yeah, James is considering going for Earth Power here, and Drain Punch. I think this makes some sense, um, though of course it is, if it is a speed tie, it is just close combat into the Iron Hands. Is it going to KO? No, it's not, so it might come down to which Iron Hands moves first. So far all we've seen is James has moved first the one time that we saw it, and it is going to be James's again. So if that's a speed tie, then I think that's probably unfortunate if you are uh, Joe, but uh, if it's not a speed tie, you know, he has won both speed ties so far, James, so maybe it's not even a speed tie, in which case that play was just really excellent and really punishing the protect. Yeah, since these two have built a team together, do you think it's one of those moments where like you have a few friends <laughs> and, they and then they just be creepy? <laughs> yeah, <you're right. laughs> if that's the case, then I'd be kind of sad, personally, uh, if I was if I was uh, Joe there. But um, yeah, I mean, it's most likely it's it's a speed tie, I think. Uh, well, the James seemed pretty happy prior to yeah. the thing being revealed is kind of what I was thinking. So yeah, I mean, this is this is over. There's no way that Iron Hand should be able to win this. I think. Yeah, with the Cursalia still healthy, yeah. you have Yawn that can just come out, plus Drain Punch just yeah. continuing. Oh my god, and a lot of damage there. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it's right here. We're going to see Drain Punches be fired off. Iron Hand's going to go down to the Drain Punch area with a heal, but did James not going to Earth Power Yawn? Either way, you should probably be able to wrap up the game regardless, because if you got the Earth Power, you get to go for the Psychic afterward. If you went for the Yawn... You could go for like Protect Lunar Blessing and then, yeah. yeah. You can Psychic as well, right? Like, yeah. Psychic Earth Power, but yeah, I mean, really well played by James. I actually think that Joe's early game was really good here. I think I think Joe found a really unique way of kind of approaching this matchup that um, was really difficult to deal with. However, James found a way. I mean, there was a point where like all of James' Pokemon were at half HP or even lower and somehow he was able to turn that around. I, I think that this was kind of Joe's game to lose and James is to win. I think that James really did a great job to find a way through it. Yeah, I think for Joe, he had like a really solid, I think like most of this plan was pretty good. I think the only problem is he was, it looked like he was trying to build towards a darker Shifu end game, mm -hmm. but the Iron Hands was just a little bit too healthy. He needed just a little bit more chip regardless. So yeah. if he was able to find that little bit of chip by just going for like maybe even like resist a Terror Blast potentially, or just like more damage with Moonblast in general, he might have just been able to squeeze out the victory right there, but that is not what happens. James is going to be up a game and Let's see if Joe has an adjustment for game two. Will he commit to the Dark Shifu again, or will he switch it up? Yeah, absolutely. I think I like Joe's lead there, in, in a sense, because, like, the Arcanine early was really nice. I think the question is, Joe brought Dark Shifu, um, his own Arcanine, and Fluttermane, and then with the fourth being um, Iron Hands. And I feel like if you're James there, what I would be thinking is, oh, wow, Terra Fairy Arcanine is actually really good into, into a lot of those Pokemon, especially with the advantage of having double Intimidate. So I guess I'm curious if... Um, if James will adjust here and, and potentially bring his own Terra Fairy Arcanine, or if, yeah, maybe the Pokemon will stay the same. I do think that James had a lot of trouble with the with the Fluttermane, and so I think that it's likely that uh, that's a priority for James to um, to handle with this, this you know, uh, this game too. Because the best feeling is when you were like, oh, I brought the wrong Pokemon, or I didn't bring the Pokemon to deal with the Pokemon that I was worried about, and... Then you're able to win the game anyway, and then you can like make it. It's like okay, I, I didn't, I, I like wasn't even punished for not bringing the right Pokemon. You know, I, I don't know if James feels like he didn't bring the right Pokemon, but I do think the Arcanine and the Fluttermane were both problematic there. Yeah, so we'll see. It looks like we're getting into game two. Looks like Fluttermane Arcanine going to be the lead once again against Iron Hands and the Gastrodon right here. So. Fake out intim intimidates on the board right here. Fake out pressure. Speed booster is going to be activated right here. You do have, I guess it's going to be pretty interesting because you do have the heavy slam still being able to maybe potentially drive into the flare main. But we did see again like a 
like an Urshifu endgame for Joe, but does James want to potentially risk taking a bunch of damage on Iron Hands immediately? Yeah, I think I think there's a, a couple things at play here. Joe, of course, last game he fake out an Earth Power turn one, I guess, the, like in exchange and use their Terra, so it wasn't a great turn one by any means. They got some less damage off. Um, yeah, I guess the question is really like, oh, this is interesting. Yeah, like like, do you want to go for fake out again? It can be really heavily punished if you fake out Earth Power and like a switch into like I don't know Cresselia even. It could be bad. Um, I think I like this play of, of the Yawn here. I think Yawn is really good. You're, I don't think you're super likely to um, end up being taunted, to be honest. Like, you want the damage down on this uh, Iron Hands if you are the Flutter main. So I, I think that this makes a lot of sense from James. We'll have to see what Joe um, goes for here since he is going for the Terrestrialization turn one again. Yeah, this could be risky, though. But Fake Out going to come out into the Arcanine once again. Moonblast is going to be fired off. Going to be able to do a pretty big amount to the Iron Hands, as we've seen before. Needs a bit more damage for the Earth Shifu. Yawn going to come out into the Hisuian Arcanine. But uh, depending on the pivots, you might be fine with taking the Yawn because you might want to switch out anyway to reset up Intimidate in the future, as well as maybe like save it towards an Extreme Speed Endgame. So going to be pretty interesting to see. Do you go for a Moonblast again to get more damage, or do you want to stop this and go for a Taunt? But that does open up to an Earth Power Heavy Slam double up. Do you even want to stay in with Arcanine, right? I mean, like, if your main... Okay, never mind. That was a dumb idea. I, mean, I think it was worth considering, right? Because if you predict the Iron Hands stay in and you do want to build towards your own Iron Hands endgame, then I think the idea of staying in isn't the, isn't the most wild thing. Um, Fluttermane going for a Protect here, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, as Heavy Slam goes into the Flutterman here, and I think this is actually a double up from James, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so, I think it was Earth Power too. Yeah, so we see that it's actually the same four Pokemon that James brought in Game 1, and Joe's revealed three of the same four, with the last one potentially being Urshifu and Unrevealed. So this is an interesting turn to me, at least, because you can switch into the Cresselia, but... Um, yeah, I mean, I guess you can switch into the Cresselia without really losing that much. It's just that Taunt Fluttermane is so good against that. Um, and... Yeah, like you don't gain that much ground, I guess. So it's I don't know. I think I think this is a really a really pivotal turn um, for both players here. Yeah, you, the fake out damage in the Iron Hands would actually put in the range of close combat. So you could go for fake out plus taunt if you want mm. to. You could go for fake out the Gastron, maybe just Moonblast, and then Iron Hands can't even switch into Wicked Blow. So you could go for a Wicked Blow end game. It's a really tricky position, I think, for James, and I think Joe getting oh. that was incredible. But uh, ooh, fake out gonna come out taunt as well into the Gastron. Yep, safe play there. Covers for Yawn. Covers for. Um, even staying in there is kind of covered for because now you're in now you're in range of Moonblast as well as the uh, uh, other option for the attack, which is um, close combat later. So yeah, overall, really nice play from Joe there. I think though, I think what what I really like about the way that James is playing it, this is he's really willing to kind of just play the chip away game. You know what I mean? Like okay, like it might be a a, a four hit KO with Earth Power, but like I need to get rid of this Flutterman eventually. It's not doing it's not threatening Gastron. It's not going to threaten Cresselia. I'm comfortable kind of just making this kind of playing this long game and. Um, yeah, like, and I think that's, I think, and, it's, and I think it's working for him as well. Yeah, I think what's unique about this position is we saw Joe most likely didn't bring Cresselia, but James has brought Cresselia, and that's going to be huge because every bit of chip Joe cannot heal. But the thing is, James, like, you have that ability to potentially switch in and catch a Lunar Blessing from your Cresselia, and then your Iron Hands is going to be out at close combat range. So, going to preserve that Iron Hands. It looks like we see Lander's going to be coming in, getting or no, Cresselia actually mm -hmm. coming in. Uh, being able to just sponge up these attacks. Oh, less. no switch out from the Iron Hands. I'm a little surprised by that. <laughs> James very upset about the special attack drop. This is going to be a Drain Bunch here. Um, I think Wild Charge might have been, been better, but maybe was worried about the KO there as Earth Power. That's getting close to another one. That's, that's getting close to three hit KO range, I think. Yeah, it looked really close last time. Looks like you do have to double the Fluttermane to KO. A Moonblast plus Wild Charge would be pretty close into Cresselia. It might actually be able to squeeze the knockout, and if you do get the knockout on Cresselia, that means no Trick Room, and that means no Lunar Blessing, so the Iron Hand is always just going to be a range of close combat besides the Intimidate from the Landers that can help support it. So, we'll see what they're building up towards. Like, Joe has gotten so much utility out of this Fluttermane. Like, James has brought out a bit more passive things with the Lunar Blessing and the Yawns, but, like, Joe has just been able to prevent it with this Taunt Fluttermane. That's been really annoying for James to actually, like... Yeah, there's just going to be a Lunar Blessing here, so kind of a... I expect this to be an attack into the Cresselia with the... Iron Hands here, 136 down to uh, 136, like 1 and 2, five, 5 total damage dealt there for James, minus the recoil. Earth Power going into the Protect here. I think that turn definitely went in uh, James's favor, though, because now James knows that Joe cannot protect his Fluttermane this turn, and Gastronaut's Taunt has ended, both being, I would argue, very impactful. 
Yeah, so here you could go for a taunt with Fluttermane, you could go for the Moonblast Wall Charge. There's also, like, if you want to risk it, you could actually switch out your Fluttermane, maybe go out on a darker Shifu to take, like, a Psychic Earth Power. It might not be the best idea, depending on how much Earth Power it does, if it's a two-shot. If it's a three-shot, it might not be that bad, because then you would actually pressure a lot with Wicked Blow, but... We'll see. It looks like just going to opt for the Moonblast instead into the Cresselia. Doing a lot. Wall Charge is going to be close. Ice Beam going to be fired off into the Fluttermane. Big damage. <laughs> Wild Charge coming out here. Sorry, I totally cut off your... Oh! oh! One HP survive! That's a big deal, right? That's actually... Sometimes living on one HP isn't that big a deal, but I think here it's actually a massive deal. As Fluttermane does go down, so... Similar kind of to Game 1, where... where James's Pokemon are lower across the board. Like, both Crest and uh, Hands have taken damage, but... Fluttermane's the first one down as Arcanine comes back in with Terra again. Yeah, this is actually going to be interesting. I'm kind of curious if Joe actually has the Darker Shifu. I think this would have actually been the time he probably wanted the Darker Shifu out because uh, if James, you assume Landers is in the back like we did before, it's actually going to be pretty weird to pivot around the Landers, I think, with what you have because you're going to have Urshifu not running any damage since it's not on the board yet and losing a Focus Ash on the Switch, so... A little bit interesting to see. I also don't know if Arcanine can really try to knock on a Gastrodon. Like, you could go for, like, maybe Terra Blast, Drain Punch. I don't know if that would even knock out the Gastrodon. Not with Landers switching in two, so... It's pretty tricky. At least the Cresselia you can probably get rid of, which means no Lunar Blessing for the uh, the Iron Hand, so it could take their Shifu attack, but there's still the Landers that's really hard to deal with. Yeah, I was almost wondering if Iron Hand is going to switch to Urshifu this turn, um, which I think makes some sense. It actually is the oh. Gastron, though. Oh. Uh, you know, actually, that's not so bad, right? Because now it's tanky, but like, it's a three versus three. You both have Iron Hands plus Gastron plus Intimidator, but crucially, you've dealt a lot more damage to their, um, in their Iron Hands than they've dealt to yours. And so I think that actually is, is pretty nice here. And um, locking into Choice Man Flare Blitz is nice as well, because the Iron Hands is low HP, and like, Valanderous probably doesn't want to take it that well e either, so, um, yeah, this is actually, I think, a pretty, like, I don't think this is a terrible spot, but getting the Yawn off there is definitely good for James. Yeah, so Lander's coming in, gonna get Intimidate off into that Arcanine. The Arcanine's locked into Flare Blitz. Gastrodon on Joe's side is drowsy right now, so we'll fall asleep if it stays in. It could threaten Ice Beam, so there is quite a bit of plays with Stomping Tantrum versus U-Turn with the Landers, so let's see if we see maybe even risky plays, like Gastron could stay in and maybe want to fire off an Ice Beam, or maybe you just always switch out into Iron Hands, maybe even risk, like you could go for a Stomping Tantrum or Power Double up into the Gastron as well, but let's see. Yeah, I actually really like staying in here. I think Flare Blitz and Ice Beam is really, really good here because you can um, either KO the Landorus or the Iron Hands. The only real counterplay to that is to switch Gastron out uh, and U-Turn in the same turn, but at that point, you know, like you're kind of expecting, you're only covering for a specific play. So with the damage from earlier, Fago Chip might actually end up mattering here. As Flare Blitz comes out here, I think that it will likely survive this, but it won't uh, survive an, an Ice Beam afterwards. So even though, oh, especially not with the turn, <laughs> James throws, throws uh, his hands in the air. I don't think this is going to be very impactful because it should just be an Ice Beam here, but we'll have to see what Joe went for here. It is just an Ice Beam, so it doesn't end up mattering. Um, <laughs> and Gastro's going to fall asleep here. So, I mean, this game is not over by any means. I think the question is, what move is Landers going to lock into? Is it just going to be Stomping Tantrum? Because that's a little bit like weaker compared to Terra Flying, Terra Blast. Um, but it is better into the Pokemon that that uh, Joe still has left, I think. Yeah, this is going to be weird. You probably do have to lock into Stomping Tantrum right here. I believe James actually has not committed his Terra at that's all. Right, yeah. So you could actually, if you wanted to, you could Terra Blast for the extra damage because the Arcanine most likely I don't think switches out. But... Even then, I think you'd rather... I think you might even have to play a sleep turn mind game, potentially. Yeah. So, uh, I don't remember how healthy Joe's Iron Hands is. I think it's is, pretty actually. healthy. Yeah. yeah. It might, it's, if it's not full HP, it's probably close to full HP. Um, I think the question for me, yeah, I, I, like, is do you switch out the Arcanine? I, I agree yeah. with this play and not to switch out, um, I think. You know, we might end up at... James, we might end up commentating a, a Gastron versus Gastron, a Yawn Gastron versus Gastron on match with Leftovers. Just like stack attack and Celestial of old. So, so Lord, I hope this Gastron gets a one turn sleep and just ends the game immediately. As well, Earth Power comes out here. That did a lot of damage. That actually did do a lot of damage. No yes, special defense drop. drop. <laughs> <laughs> Although this is actually pretty interesting because mm -hmm. I think what I like for James's position is... Oh, this actually could be a really strange play. So you here's could wild charge an ice beam. No, <laughs> yeah. So so here's the awkward part. Like, yeah, do you want to actually Terra here? But the thing is, you don't have to fake out if you're Joe. Like, maybe you want to 
normally fake out maybe Ice Beam to land this, but because it has a Terra Flying option, it'll live a fake out Ice Beam combination yeah. most likely. So this is actually like, maybe a, you have to go down to a read, I think, if you're Joe. And we'll see if he actually is able to read this because that's going to be a pretty big one. Yeah, I'm looking at his face. I can't really read anything. He's got his poker face on. Uh, let's see here. It is Stomping Tendrum, so there's no fake out. So, what did Joe go for here? It's going to do a lot of damage. It does survive, though. Iron Hand's going for a wild charge into the Landorus. Is it going to pick up the one shot? It will! Iron Hand's one AKO's Landorus thanks to the Terra. A remarkable read. However, this game is not over because now it's going to end up as Gastron versus Gastron. Iron's going to barely survive the recoil here. However, Gastron went for an Earth Power, and the opposing Gastron is fast asleep. So, this is a Gastron versus Gastron match. Does being asleep actually give you an advantage here, James, do you think? I mean,. I don't think so, right? So what's interesting here is the only way you would play out of that if you're James is like hope for the sleep turn and then like not Terra and then like the wild charge wouldn't affect it and then like it's asleep so yeah. Ice Beam wouldn't have KO'd. But like, yeah, this is going to be kind of weird. Based on the Earth Power damage, I think it's just going to come down to Yawn Sleep and maybe some Spadef drops and crits with it. So the thing is, James is kind of low on Earth Powers too. I think but get I, I think it shouldn't come down to a PP stall war. I think it's like coming down to like yawn games at this point. Yeah, and there's also are, are they speed tying? Like I haven't been yeah, this far, so if they're speed tying, then there's also a question. Like he's going for yawn. He's considering going for yawn here, but that you need both to wake up and yeah. to lose the speed tie. Let's see here. It is a three turn sleep, so that's actually the worst case scenario for Joe. If he wakes up there, he's he's in a much better spot. But here, Earth Power can do a lot of. Oh, it's, oh. Great. it's, it's over. <laughs> Uh, it's not over, but it's not looking good. I think you need, I think you need a double protect if you even want to live one or power. I think you take show. one. I think you take one. After the leftovers from this turn? Yeah. It's going to be close, but even then, both Gastrons are probably going to fire off a yawn at that point. It's... Oh. Yeah, I actually, I feel like you want to yawn this turn, although... The thing is that Yawn Yawn and the Protect actually favors Joe because he's fine dragging this out both for PP and for re recovery from leftovers. So actually, I think that this might be like I think that this is Joe's way ba back into this game is Yawn for Yawn here, Protect, and then just like then it's just pure sleep turns, right? Well, they're both gonna fall asleep. I think it's gonna come down to who wakes up. Yeah, yeah, but I mean like before, otherwise, yeah. like, all you needed was a, like one turn. So, I don't know. Maybe yeah, I don't know. Maybe this is the right play. It's kind of difficult to say because Joe's at half HP now, right? After, sorry, after this turn's Protect, and next turn's uh, Leftovers Recovery. Actually, I I guess Ice Beam does make sense, because you know it's always Protecting, but, yeah, but it'd be really beam funny beam. if it was Freeze on and then, Fall. Yeah, the exact same thought. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have the Speedless Sleep Advantage. Okay, yeah, so Joe's at a little, he's going to get just under 56% here at the end of this next turn, which is the first turn either of them have a chance of waking up, so... I mean, okay, if this is a three-turn sleep for James and a one-turn sleep for Joe, it's their, their health is going to be really similar, I think. Yeah, but the, I think the big advantage for Joe is he's actually getting utility out of leftovers, exactly. which is probably a bit better. Granted, like, the fact that your full HP for James is still magnificent, but right here, both Pokemon guaranteed to take their first turn of sleep. <laughs> if both Pokemon stay asleep, I think it's still favored for James, but, like, if Joe wakes up and James stays asleep... We'll see, oh but. man, that's two turns sleep for Joe. I have a feeling James wakes up this turn. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's gonna make it very difficult for Joe. That's that's two unlucky sleep turns in a row. It's unclear whether or not he'll even take another Earth Power. I feel like you should say the phrase "Wolf," with the World Champ difference. I think Joe's. I'll say a different phrase. <laughs> Joe's back is against the wall, but it's not over here. If he wakes up this turn, tanks the Earth Power, goes for the Yawn, protects. Three turn sleep, he could win the game. He gets another three turn sleep. <laughs> this guy is not waking up to get this gastron some uh, some some coffee or something because this, it's taking an apple. It didn't even matter. That, that's that's an unfortunate end game for for Joe. Well played by James. Um.